Hey everyone, Chris here. Welcome back to the shop. As a scale modeler, I know for me, I'm always looking for ways to uh, add detail, things that just make an otherwise ordinary airplane kind of pop, right? Whether it's modifications, upgrades, or anything of that sort. Uh, and so, you know, a few years ago, I brought to market a simulated afterburner system called the Center Burner. Uh, this was a collaborative effort with a friend of mine. Since that time, uh, that system has evolved. It's become a whole line of products. Uh, and so I thought it would be worthwhile to come back and talk about the Center Burner family of products uh, give you guys an installation video, talk about all the different variations now. Ultimately what this is, the center burner line of products, is a very unique approach to the simulated afterburner system. It's a custom built LED board that's installed onto a custom 3D printed tail cone and that adapts to a whole variety of different electric ducted fans. And ultimately what you get is an extremely bright and authentic looking beautiful center glow that looks extremely realistic. And with the color of the LEDs that I'm using, you've got a nice orange amber glow. And so when we talk about the center burner systems, it uh, consists of three different types. For the 64 millimeter up to the 70 millimeter EDFs, is the original mini burner for 80 millimeter edfs all the way up to 120 plus edfs uh, it's the original center burner uh, and for each one of those there is a twin option available uh, that is intended for aircraft that have two fans in them such as the freewing f14 or the e-flight su30 any of those types uh, and then otherwise for a single fan installation like an F-16 or something like that, it would just be a single center burner or mini burner depending on the EDF size. And then there's an additional option called the multi burner, which is extremely unique and is designed for single fan dual exhaust installations. Uh, it consists of two LED assemblies mounted onto a single tail cone in a Y configuration, and those point out towards both of the exhaust outlets. And so this is ideal for, say, the Freewing F4, FMS Rafale, any aircraft that has a single fan but dual exhaust in the back, and it gives you an extremely realistic look in the airframe. And so for all of these different types, there are options for in-runner and out-runner motors. And so it's important to know the distinction between both and what is in your aircraft. For example, if you've got an out-runner fan, in many cases there are tail cones present on the fans, but otherwise to discern if an outrunner motor is installed, if you spin the impeller on the fan, uh, that whole outside of the motor inside that center tube is going to rotate with the fan, hence the name Outrunner, because the whole outside spins as the motor is engaged. Whereas for an in-runner motor, the whole outside is stationary and the rotor rotates inside the motor. And so this is a very important distinction because with an in-runner motor, we can attach things directly onto the motor, whereas with an outrunner motor, we have to install in a different way, whether it's directly attached to the fan or tied into the stators or something like that. Additionally, with an in-runner motor, the three wires do come out the back of the motor itself. And so that's a pretty easy way to discern if it's an outrunner versus an in-runner. And while there are a number of different burner options available, they all install into the model in the same way. And so it starts by removing the fan and installing the center burner system onto the fan. Either gets slipped onto the back of the motor or attached to the fan itself. And then from there, route the wires forward through the airframe uh, into the forward area where the receiver ends up. Uh, and so those are the power wires for the LEDs. Uh, and so those get fished through and it's really helpful to use a wire with a hook on the end or something like that to help fish them through. That really is kind of the hardest part and it's really not hard. Uh, so long as you just take some time uh, to ensure that you're fishing things through really well. Now once that's all fished through, the LEDs get reconnected to the center burner controller. Uh, and there are two rows of pins available on the controller. It doesn't matter which row and also the polarity of the plug doesn't matter either. You can do it any which way and it'll work no problem. And then you connect the system to the receiver and this can be done through a Y harness on the throttle channel so it works directly in conjunction with throttle or you can set it up on a separate channel uh, and this is done simply by 
plugging in the center burner controller into that channel that you have available and then just simply assigning that channel to throttle and that's it. It's really simple to do that way. I do want to note that if you have the full spectrum smart telemetry, which is the spectrum speed controller with spectrum smart receiver, it does require setting up the afterburner on a separate channel. Uh, so just do be aware of that. Uh, but otherwise, you can do it either way if you don't have that technology uh, active in the airframe. And so once you have that all in there, the system is fully programmable, meaning that you can set the desired throttle position, at which point you want the lights to come on. Simply set your throttle to your desired position, hit the button on the controller twice, and then that will save that point. An additional note, if you find that the system is operating in reverse, simply bring the throttle to your desired position, hit the button once on the controller, and that should resolve that. Uh, lastly, the light should be powered by a small 2S LiPo battery for the maximum brightness. I use a small 2S 250 milliamp hour LiPo. I do have a link down in the description for the perfect match for that. This is an extremely lightweight solution. It's extremely small and you can use it in any application. And the nice thing about it is it doesn't draw an imbalance on your flight pack and it lasts many flight outings on a single charge. And so it works out really well. And so that is the heart of it. And you know, while this is fun on the bench, where it really shines is in flight. And you know, this truly has been an ever evolving product. I'm continually making updates, improving, just making it the best as physically possible. And so I truly hope that you've found this helpful and that you enjoy the product as much as I have. These are all available on my website, thercgeek.com. I have a link down in the description uh, where you can find them all. I've got tons of options and I'm always adding more too. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching. I just recently posted a video about sound systems. So be sure to check that out here. Uh, and until next time, I'll see you at the future.